to share just a few words as we get started. You're going to hear a little bit from her in a minute, too. Um, as we are affirming Pastor Frank's ordination and we are recognizing and ordaining uh, Pastora, amen, Joni. We're saying that, we're saying that because we know, we, we, we work with Latin churches as well, and when I see our, our, our precious women pastors, for the most part, we just say pastora. Now, if you want to call her pastora, you can, or you can call her pastor, amen, but we're going to be ordaining her. But Nancy, go ahead and share. Do you want this for a second? You know what? I, I just think, should I mount that? I know. No. Yeah. no. You got another? Got a hand mic? Here, you can just hold this for right now. Yeah, you have to wear other ones. Okay, I'll just do it this way. Um, I want to say to you, first of all, it's a joy to be here together. Yes. The second thing I want to say to you, honestly, is an exhortation, a prophetic word. Not that I'm, you know, just trying to uh, do this, but the Lord did speak to me, and I thought I would wait till I got up here. Yes. The Lord says to you that you are truly the church of the redeemed. And though the streets are filled with those who would march and parade for this cause and that cause, you are the living legacy of what I have done on the cross for the whole world. And as you cheer this day, I hear you, says the Lord. I hear your shouts. I hear your cheers. I hear you in the parade of your life and the life of others, bringing forth my glory as truly the ones that are redeemed. For there are many who sit and who worship in houses, but their lives do not emanate my redemption. But you are my cheerleaders and my spokesmen of those who truly have been washed in my blood and filled with my word and my spirit. And I hear your cheers today, says the Lord. They're not cheers for man, but they're cheers for me and for what I have done and what I am doing and what I will yet do in you and through you. So know that I, the Lord, this day rejoice and I delight in the parade of your lives. For you are my redeemed one, says the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. It's, it's wonderful to be here. You know, we're on a journey together. It's a, a thrill to be here for this ordination of, of Pastor Jody. Also to recognize Pastor Frank, who we've known for years and years and years, both of them together. And uh, it's a joy to see what God is going to do. And we're looking forward to seeing you more as God enables. And honestly, it's an honor and a humble privilege to be trusted with God's servants. That's how we feel. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Father. Thank you for that word. And uh, the Lord spoke to me as well, and I'm going to begin with something very similar. But the Lord says that he has called us to this table of freedom. And here at this table, there's a freedom, first of belonging, of identity, hallelujah, and deliverance. And you can look around at your companions and see that they have been eating of this food that the Father has laid at your, you know, at your disposal. And those who have eaten the food have been transformed and changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So go out into the byways and to the highways and compel them to come in, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And as I look every time I come here, but the Lord spoke to me so clearly, every time I come here and I look at those who have pulled themselves up to this table, and the Lord just spoke to me so clearly, this is a table of freedom. It's a table of freedom. You know, so as this brother who just shared, he pulled himself up to the table, this other brother who could have, you know, with 15 felonies, you know, was what pastor was telling me last night. That's unprecedented, unprecedented. You know, in my neighborhood, and I'm in New York too, two felonies, you're going to prison. You know, it's that simple. You know, 15 felonies. Amen. This is a table of freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Of identity and deliverance. Amen. And deliverance. Thank you, Father. Oh, one more. And I already said it. I just didn't want to make sure I forgot it. Belonging. Belonging. You know, I don't know about you, but just about every one of us who ended up finding, you know, the pathway to stupidity, we're looking for belonging. Amen. 
We were looking for a place to belong. Some of us came from great families with good parents. And I understand when someone doesn't come from a family of that nature, but I came from a great family, but I still struggle with belonging. And that's because Jesus said it like this, I won't leave you the way I found you. You know how he found us? We're orphans. We're all orphans. See, that's just not an issue that someone else has. That's an issue we all have. Amen. Until we find, hallelujah, our father, until we're born of his seed, being begotten again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God that lives and abides forever. Amen. And when that happens, I love Pastor, Pastor Frank's burden as we talked last night, his life message is, who are you? You know, who are you? Amen. And the greatest thing that you can say, I'm a child of God. That's who I am. Amen. You know, long before I'm a pastor, amen, a minister, a doctor, a lawyer, an attorney, a colonel, a general, a, sweet, a street sweeper, I'm a child of God. Amen. amen. And no greater achievement in life can stand up to that simple truth. I'm his son. I'm his daughter. Amen. Amen. So we're here today to celebrate what the Lord is doing in your family's life. Amen. This is your family. Pastor Frank and Jody have been here serving with you for now 20 years. 20 years. Jody has neglected, not by neglect, but just said, no, that, that's okay. When others have said to her, why aren't you ordained? I said something to Pastor Frank years ago, and he reminded me of that last night. He said, one thing you said to me I'll never forget. He said, when you begin to gather leaders around you and entrust people with responsibility, give it to those men and women who are already doing it. Who are already doing it. And I said to him, and he, he said, that's because you'll, he said, because they will not let it go to their head. But even more importantly, it will be no surprise to anyone. Today is no surprise. In fact, many of you have thought the same thing. It's like, you mean she's not ordained? <laughs> you mean she's not ordained? I thought she was ordained. And let me explain just briefly what ordination is. And Nancy will share a little bit too as she comes to charge you as a congregation, as a body. I'll be charging, you know, Pastor Jody herself. But ordination is an acknowledgement of what she's already doing. She's already doing it. All the questions that I'll ask her that she'll answer, you will already know she's doing that. That's a given. But she will say in return, I will or I do whatever it is. It's similar in a sense to a wedding, the marriage is between she and the Lord. Amen. And she's just reaffirming her, convic her conviction, her commitment, her surrender, her willingness to go the distance with the Lord, her laying it down right here at this altar. Amen. But you'll say, I thought that was already done. See, I thought we've already been doing that. So I want you to open your Bibles. We're going to be running through some passages of Scripture, taking a little different path than what I ordinarily do. I have to be honest with you, what I've been doing in the midst of the insanity of 2020 is seeking first the kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Some people find fault with me for doing that, think I should be out in the streets burning down stores with them. Amen. And, uh, but that's not an answer to anything at all. The kingdom and its king is the answer. Amen. Jesus said, preach this gospel, take it to the ends of the earth, and then shall the end come. And not until this gospel is preached in all the earth. Amen. The end will not come. So apparently we're not done. We've got work to do. We have work to do. We have work to do in Kingston, work to do in New York State, work to do unto the ends of the earth. So I want to start by saying these are words similar to what you'll hear us speak over, over Pastor Jody, but let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. And this is what the scripture says, for we know, it says, we know. 
So I'll let you get there, you know, and we'll read it together. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. We're going to be jumping around just a little bit. And since, you know, I love it that we don't have somebody sitting on the, in the back throwing the scripture up for us, you know, you're going to get to uh, find these yourself, mark them, write them. By the way, if you don't have a Bible that you write in, throw that one away and get one that you do. Okay? Um, it's a joy. I can't read my Bible without a pen. Can't do it. I start to read and I just get fidgety. You know, I have to have a pen or a or something to mark it. But this is what it says. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just pause for a minute. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you're here this morning. If you don't know the grace and you've come because you've seen something happen, happening in a friend, what you're witnessing is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that they have embraced. Now, what this passage says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for our sakes, he became poor. I want you to just think about that. God, who became man, wasn't just becoming poor by becoming man, but he stepped even lower than that. As Paul describes in Philippians, he humbled himself. He became a servant. He went to the cross. He laid his life down for us. Amen. He took what one friend of mine calls the colossal stoop. The colossal stoop. He didn't just genuflect when he came into the church and started to enter his pew. I grew up doing that. Grew up in the Catholic Church. Wasn't just a genuflect, but he who was rich became poor for us, that he through his poverty might make us rich. Hallelujah. This is a rich household this morning. This is a full household who knows that in their father's house there's a big, big table with lots and lots of food. Big, big yard where we can play football. Amen. Boy, that's an old one, isn't it? Was that Newsboys or? Uh, it was Newsboys, wasn't it? Amen. Big, big house. But I want you to take, take you now to Galatians chapter 5. And Paul, who summarized this expression of grace, is now talking to some people that have known the grace of God, but they've begun to think, unlike this song earlier, and I took pictures of songs and I'm going to look for them. I think a lot of them might have been locally written. I could be wrong. But the one about this not being, I'm done with my religion, was creeping back into the Galatian church. I want you to know that that, that temptation is in all of us. Because we all grew up walking down the same sidewalk, just telling ourselves, if I don't step on the crack, amen, when I get to her house, she'll like me. Are you with me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I stepped on that crack. Oh, no. So I almost program myself to believe when I get there, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. But if I get there and I've missed all the cracks, oh, it's going to be good, see? See, that's my own self-induced religion. And then there's other religion that when we're looking for a place to belong, we start eating that food, you might say, or drinking that Kool-Aid, right? And so Paul has to say to the Galatians in chapter 5, verse 14, he said, I want to tell you something. That all the law is fulfilled in one word. Are you ready for this? Love your neighbor. Amen. Now, he doesn't even go into love your neighbor as yourself. Just love your neighbor. Because he's quoting Leviticus 19.18. It was a very good year. 
I don't know anything about it other than I think it was the First World War. Yeah. First, oh, well, there you go. That's right. That's right. Was that the Spanish flu? What was that? Spanish flu, yeah. 1918. Leviticus 19.18. All the law is fulfilled in one word. Agape. Now, it's really important for a minute that you set aside your idea of love. Very important. You might love your new car. It's, it's cool to love your spouse. That's important because we're getting closer to the kind of love that he's talking about. But he's talking about a kind of love that only God can dispense. We don't have it until we receive it. We can't do it. There's no way to duplicate it. We can't make it up. And all the law and the prophets are summed up in one word, love. Now, at a time when, in my lifetime, I've never witnessed, and I don't mind telling you, it's Pastor Frankie's birthday today. He's 60. I got him. Amen. Amen. Let's thank, thank the Lord for that. Thank you, Lord. He doesn't want to be recognized today, but hey, I want to honor him as well. I got him by five, so in 65 years, I've never seen so much insanity in our country in the U.S. of A. Never seen this kind of insanity. But the only peace that you and I can have is for us to stay focused, as Pastor has already said, on that which he has done for not only us, but for the whole world, to recognize nor be surprised by what those who know not God are doing. Amen? We're going to see and understand a little more of that in just a minute. But everything you have ever wanted, please hear me, everything you have ever dreamed about is summarized in one word, agape, agape. 380 times in the New Testament. Now, I know you already know about phileo and eros, because those obviously are men's love, man's love. But God's love is the single most priority of the New Testament. God so what? Loved. Loved. That's agape. Actually, it's agapao because there's a verb form and there's a noun form for you English enthusiasts out there. Agape is the noun, agapao. Agapao. Agapao, God so agapao the world. That what did he do? He gave. Wow. I'm, I still, I'm still scratching my head, see? I go back to Galatians 8 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. Why? Because he loved the world. Now, I want to say something to you. That's the love that he imparted to you the day you were born of him. That's what gave you not just the energy, not just the anointing, but the supernatural regeneration. You became a new creation. Hallelujah. Birthed by the love, the light, the life of God. Amen? Amen. See, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by Him, without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and His life was the light of men. Amen? Amen. And when He shone, shone that light, darkness, when it says did not comprehend it, it simply means could not overwhelm it. So when he shone his life into your darkness, hallelujah, you could not overcome it, amen? Amen. Amen. Nor could you comprehend it, amen? We're still endeavoring to comprehend it. 
we're going to be wowed this morning because we're pausing at his table, not because I'm speaking, I'm nothing, I'm dirt, I'm a piece of dirt, but I'm, I'm drinking from the same fountain you are, but more importantly, born of the same seed. Yeah. Hallelujah. And this, your pastor, is saying, yes, Lord, I'll throw it down. I'll give it all to be your servant. Not to have REV in front of your name. Call no man reverend. I think I read that in his book. Amen. Call no woman reverend. Amen. But the Lord, our Father. And why we've come up with that concept is a humbling, very humbling title of surrender, as far as I'm concerned. But that's not what Jody is after this morning. She's just laying it down, amen, along with you. It's not a title that makes her anyone. It's not a position, amen. But as pastor has learned, sometimes when you give somebody a title, and give them a position it does something to them. It's not going to do anything to Jody. Jody says, I'm not interested in it. Her husband has said, honey, it's time. Different ones in the church have said, it's time. Other fellow pastors and leaders have said, Jody, it's time. Let us recognize what God has done and is doing in you. Amen. To us, it's Amen. Amen. To us, it's important, too, being a woman, that she be recognized for what God is doing in her life. See, we still live in a guy's club world, and I confess that as a man, that I'm often among men who still make silly statements, amen, about gender. I'm pretty sure the, they read the same Bible I read, but my Bible says there's neither male nor female, bond nor free, yeah. Scythian, and so on. I mean, nations, I don't even know who they are. Amen? But there's no difference between us. By the way, if we all stand up and cut our hands and looked at the blood, we all have the same blood. Male, female, red or yellow, black and white, we are made of one blood. That's in the book of Acts, by the way, if you want to be able to quote that to your friends. One blood. One. Amen. Amen? One blood. Amen. So quickly, let me run through a few things. Recently, two things have really gripped me as we talk about agape. And the kingdom, two things that the Lord just began to recall to me. One is absolutes. And the other is attributes. Say that with me. Absolutes and attributes. If you look around and see other tables, if we refer to churches this morning as tables, you see that they're not all sharing the same diet. What's spread before them is not, unfortunately, as it used to be, absolutes. Because we want to ignore God's absolutes. And his absolutes reveal his attributes. And if you want a simple definition of an attribute, it's whatever God has revealed of himself that is true. Okay? And God isn't going to reveal anything of himself that is not true. Turn to Romans chapter 1 real quick. I was happy to hear that Pastor Jody has been teaching Romans. I was amazed when I found out she was using my notes. That's awesome. I was really encouraged, you know. So, and you make copies of that, you know, give them away. I'm serious, you know. I'm not looking for a thing. I'm happy that you're able to use that. I want you to turn your attention to Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, you thought you were reading about 
centuries ago. This is today. He's shaking our world in a way that's only a mild tremor right now compared to how it will shake. Hebrews chapter 12. He's going to shake everything that can be shaken so that only that which cannot be shaken will remain. So I'm asking you to let go of what can be shaken. Let go of your attachment to it. Cut back, live simple, come to his table, and don't be surprised by what you see taking place. Why? Because the wrath of God is going to be unleashed against the unrighteousness of men. Yeah. Are, you, are we in agreement here? Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I didn't sneak this into your Bible no. this morning. Let, let, let's keep going. And why? Who hold the truth in unrighteousness, verse 19, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. There's no one out there who can say, well, well I didn't know. Right. That's right. They may not have pulled themselves up to the table, but God has already made known to them the important absolutes and attributes of God. Yeah. Keep reading. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Until the night, night before the election, I haven't posted anything on Facebook. I'm not a big Facebook fan. I haven't posted hardly anything but sunsets because I'm amazed by his creation. Yeah, right. The heavens declare the glory of God yeah. and the earth shows forth his handiwork. Sunrise, sunset, the stars, the moons. I have like 3,000 pics on my phone, probably half of which are nature. Nature. I go see a sunset on my backyard. I don't have to go far. I take my grandkids out there. We call it Poppy's Trail to the Sun. <laughs> Amen. It's really the, the S-O-N. And in fact, within a month or so, I'm hoping to release our first book. And the cover is going to be a picture of my grandson and I watching a sunset. It's powerful to me in that it's a book on discipleship, but he's looking up at me while I'm looking at the sun. And he's seeing what I'm doing, and you can almost see it in his eyes. That's what I want to do, right? I want, I want to tell you something. Not only your grandchildren and your children, but everyone is watching you. Everyone's been watching Pastor Jody. That's why we're here today, today and none of us are surprised. Amen? None of us are surprised. See, God is making you one of those people who secretly people are saying, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. I want to follow the path that you're leading. That's right. Why? Because you have ingested not only his seed, but his love. So have clearly seen the invisible attributes of God. You with me there? Yeah. Verse 21, because although they knew God, they chose not to glorify him as God nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made by corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. I'm gonna be very careful. I don't have to tell you things you already know about those who hold the truth in unrighteousness are doing in our world. But you and I have a mission. And that mission is agape. Yeah. 
It's agape. What is God like? Asked an eight-year-old boy. What is God like? The answer is, God is not like anything. Please hear me. Even though in what he has created, he has revealed himself, God is unlike anything we can point to. And the best thing that we can do in describing God, because we are human, is to use images that only God can give us. The only image that I know that accurately defines God is agape love. The cross is agape love. And while it's an accurate image of who he is, it's a it's scandalous to those who did not believe that their Messiah would go that way. Now see, that's what's amazing to me, our Jewish, and I'm going to call them brothers and sisters, because they are going to acknowledge who he is, have been kind of put on hold so that you and I could come to the table. Amen? Amen. We're the ones grafted in, but they're from the root. We're branches, amen, that have been grafted in, but they are the root. So don't reject them, don't criticize them, amen. Embrace them, welcome them, agape them. Are you with me? Agape them. So quickly, as we move toward this ordination, I want to share simply four things that I call the accept ye's of Jesus. The accept ye's of Jesus. See, we all came, number one. Jesus told Nicodemus, except ye be born again. Ye cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That's verse 3, 3-3. Three, three. Except ye be born again. So what did Nicodemus think right away? Are you serious? My mother, my mother will not hear that. Oh my God, how am I going to tell her that? Are you with me? See? And what mother here, you know, would, would, you know, if their child came to them and said, hey, you know, uh, for me to get in this thing, uh, you got to do that, we got to do this again. No. No. That's right. No, you're one and done, pal. So take a hike, you know. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, it's so important. Please, Mom, don't misunderstand this. The womb is critical. It's so important. But when it comes to the new birth... We're not talking about the womb. We're talking about the seed. Are we together? And what's amazing to me, that no one else picks up this, you must be born again, but Peter. That's right, Peter, in his first letter, and I've already quoted it, I'm going to say it again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible his seed, my father's seed. See, that's the new birth. If you're here today and you felt that just coming to the table and just coming to the church and even just coming to the altar without really being, listen, born of your father's seed, do it right now. Right now. How how does that happen? Through faith. Amen? Amen. He's quickening and causing you to know that truth. You embrace that through faith. You're regenerated. You become a new creation. Now it's not just religion anymore. It's not just singing another song, feeling good, going home, and realizing, man, I'm I'm the same person. I have no control over this whatever, alcohol or substance or whatever it might be, or anger or or rejection or, or insecurity. 
Oh, but you will be when you're born of your father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're born of your father. Hallelujah. Everything we sang this morning is absolutely true when you're born of your father. Otherwise, it's just religion. It's just religion. And you look around and say, I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, I've had enough. I'll see you later. See? But when you're born of your father, you say, wow, this is good. This is so good. Number one, except you be born again. Be born again. Today, Jody is committing, as she has all her life, amen, since she became born again, to see others also born of his agape love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Secondly, except ye become as a child. Hallelujah. I love this. Because it's not hard for me to become a child. Years ago, I heard someone say, and it's so true, and I didn't have to practice this because I was already doing it. You know, you can grow old in age, but don't grow old in attitude. Stay young. Yeah. How do you do that? Become as a child. See? Now watch this. This is what, this is what the Word says. This is amazing. Except ye be converted, Jesus says. It involves some change. Conversion really is the new birth, but it transforms us. It changes us. And now this religion thing goes the way. It's like, forget about it. And when I see it creeping back in, as it was with the Galatians, amen, creeping back in, Paul needed to address it very sternly, you know, and, 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 in a, in, a, in a real strong spirit of correction, except ye be converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom. That's basileia. And this is really cool. I'm going to give you three R's real quick. The Greek word basileia simply means the rule. I love this. The reign and the realm of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Except you become as a child, you won't understand the rule the reign or the realm of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Except you be born again, except you be converted and become as a child. Third, for, thirdly, accept your righteousness. Exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Wow, what does that mean? Well, Jesus modeled it throughout the New Testament. Who was, who had their scope on him more than anyone else? Critical scope. Accusational scope. Undermining, threatening scope. Scribes and Pharisees who proclaimed a form of righteousness, amen, as Paul says to the Romans, they going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. To understand this, turn with me to Zacchaeus, Luke chapter 19, real quickly. This isn't going to take long at all. All we have to do is sing, Zacchaeus was... A wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. You got to help me, honey. And as the Savior came that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. Yes, I'm going to your house to stay. That's right. You got that? If you haven't, we're going to work on that one, but not, not just right now. We're running out of time. So Luke chapter 19, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. Real quickly, I just have to say, he, I wrote some things down real quick this morning just to describe what that means. All of those whose one 
whose one's religious system had rejected. Tax collector. Categorized, classified as scum, worthless, detestable. What do you think about tax collectors? Don't tell me. What do you think about uh, some political leaders? That's all right. We keep that to ourselves. We got little titles for them. I understand. That's who Zacchaeus was. But watch what happened to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus decided he wanted, and it says, and he sought to see who Jesus was. You remember that day? That's why you're still here today. Amen? It's worth coming to church believing I'm going to see more of who Jesus was. But remember that early day when you sought to see who Jesus was. So Zacchaeus is having his moment, amen, but could not because of the crowd. He was a short little guy, and he was of a short stature, so he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. Let me back up. I I ran right over something I wanted to say. But he could not because of the crowd. Okay. Now, what crowd is derailing you? We actually, ha- we, here's, what, here's what the crowd is. It's what's trending. What's trending? So everybody wants to be in the stream of what's trending. I don't know about you, when, when I realize it's trending, I'm going the other direction. See? This is what's trending now. He could not because of what was trending, are you with me, in the streets. So he ran ahead. And the Lord says to you today, run ahead of the crowd. Run ahead of the crowd. Amen. It's pastors who run ahead of the crowd. They're not popular for that, but they're running ahead of the crowd. Amen. While the trends are trying to sell themselves to them. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So time fails us. You read the rest of the story. When he gets to his home, Zacchaeus is so humbled that he he, he's surrendering to the Lord. He's saying, I will, I will pay four times any people I've taken advantage of. Amen. I'm going to make recompense. I'm going to make restitution. Not that the Lord needed that from him, but he's so humbled by what the Lord, that the Lord simply came and wanted to stay at the tax collector's house. See? That's your righteousness, exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Because if a scribe and Pharisee had sat down at the table in a tax collector's house, amen, he would have been kicked out of the club. Are you with me? See, in this house are a lot of broken people. Or they were broken, and now they're fixed. But maybe their reputation was one that some people think, oh, they were a tax collector. Just in the category of what they might call a low life in their world. But Jesus says, in my world, in the world of agape, there are no low lives. We're all high lives. Hallelujah. We're all sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord of God. Real quickly, except you be born again, except you be converted and become as a child, except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. And it's not something you can do. It's something you just receive from him. Amen. Get off your high horse. Stay low. Thank you, Father. Serve the broken. Remember the poor. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring everyone to the table. That's why we love this place. We love your pastor's hearts. When we, when we just sit at the table with them, that's what we feel from them. They've been committed and devoted to that. Why? Because they know the grace yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That though he was rich, for our sakes he became poor. Yes. Amen. And one more. Matthew chapter 5. 
except ye, and these words are not in there, but they're in there. And this is how he says it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. The kingdom of agape love. Amen. You don't earn your way into it. You simply accept his welcome into it. And here's how you do it. Listen. listen. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father. Wow. So you may say, that's a, that sounds like works to me. That's not works. That's surrender. I said Matthew 5, forgive me, 7, 7.21. Matthew 7.21. As Jesus is, or Matthew's actually wrapping up what we might call the Sermon on the Mount. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. I didn't intend to go this far, but I'm going to do it. He goes on a little further. He says, for there will be many who come to me in that day. And this is what they're going to say. This is what they're going to say. You know, Lord, we, we did many wonderful works. We, that's right, prophesied. We cast out devils. We, uh, let me get there. You know, he says, we cast out demons in your name. We did wonders. We sang about that today. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. We didn't have a relationship. So you weren't born of my father's seed. You did religion but not a relationship. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness or iniquity. See, Pastor Jody and Pastor Frank know that all we like sheep have gone astray. Amen? That's why we're here. We all turned everyone to our own way, see? But we're not going to get there that way. Because the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And our brother on the base, forget his name, but he opened with Isaiah 53, if you were paying attention. It's in Isaiah 53 that the Father says he will see the travail of his soul. Whose soul? Jesus' soul. He shall see the suffering that he endured for us. That sin was placed upon him. My sin was placed upon him. And satisfied the righteous judgment of God. And it says, and he was satisfied. He was satisfied. See, I have found in my life that some of my iniquity is spiritual. That's right. It's good stuff. But it wasn't my father's will. That's the bottom line. I took initiative in ways that you'll have to read the book to see. Good initiatives, initiatives birthed in zeal, passion, but they were not my father's will. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. That's why every now and then if a pastor takes you to the side or you come to him and ask him if you have the guts to do it, pastor, what do you think? And he shares with you what he thinks, not because you need his permission. It's because God has placed him in your life or her in your life for that guidance, for that counsel and consideration. They can't choose for you. You must choose. You must hear the voice of the Lord. But if you refrain from that, then listen, you're just like me. When I practice my orphan independence and rebellion, though I'm a Christian, see, because we all love that independence. And why should I ask him? Because the more I know, I don't need to check in with him anymore or her anymore. That's what happens because knowledge does what? Puffs up. Puffs up. But guess what builds up? Agape. That's right. Agape. Look at the, gr- the Greek roots of all the love, chap- love verses. It'll overwhelm you. 
while I'm gaining knowledge. I could be studying Romans as good as it is. Amen? I study all the New Testament. I can quote the whole New Testament. But knowledge, if you're not careful, will puff you up. But agape, which is what this church, hallelujah, is dispensing, and anything less than that is all the strayness of us. Take it away to this morning, Lord. Take it all away. And as we stand in a few moments together and honor what the Lord is doing in one life here, a leader's life, a pastor's life, amen, we surrender all of our iniquity because it's not only except you be born again, it's not only except you become as a child, it's not only except you, your righteousness succeed, it's that we do the will of our Father. So that said, I'm going to ask Jody and Frank to come forward and stand here. Nancy, come and join me. I'm going to exam, manate <laughs> the candidate. If you want to get chairs, you can sit down, but if you'd like to stand. Go ahead, honey. You got a scripture to share first? Yeah. Or after? After? Go ahead and do that now. You want this? I'll just take this out. Frank, I can just pass this, bro. I just didn't want him to have to hang by his collar. No, don't yeah. worry about it. No, 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 I'm taking this right out of here. Well, I've hung by my collar before. <laughs> I've hung by worse. All right. So let's get this down here. This is our official Sorry, exam. Sorry, you guys. Okay, take that. I'm just going to hold it like this. Hallelujah. Um, I want to bring a, an exhortation of scripture and in keeping with what the Lord has said already, um, I wanted to note something that just this week the Lord highlighted for me that really goes along with the call of God upon your life, Jody, and of course, pastors, Pastor um, Frank. But it says of Jesus in John 12, this is what Jesus said, he's speaking, for I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his command is everlasting life. We always think of the commandments as being the thou shalt not. But the command that Jesus was given that he shared, the command that the Father gave him was everlasting life. That's in John chapter 13 at the very end, 12, at the very end of the chapter. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Then the next chapter in 13 is about the disciples where he washes the di disciples' feet and says that, you know, if you're going to be a leader, you have to be a servant of all. And he, he demonstrated that by washing their feet like a servant. But in the beginning, it says of Jesus after he said, the Father gave me this command, and what his command was, everlasting life. Jesus had to give and speak everlasting life and display that. That's the main message. No other cause, no other ministry can we have really. The message, the center is everlasting life and that all men should be saved. And then it says of Jesus, this goes along with my husband's message, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So we, like Jesus and his ministers, called as pastors, we love God's people till the end. It's about love. So three things I just want to share in this exhortation of scripture. 
In Ephesians 4, the word of God says that Jesus gave gifts to men. He gave gifts. So I want you to say with me, gift. He gave people gifts, not spirit gifts, but people gifts. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. That is the gift that God has given the world, but particularly the church. And you know why he's given those gifts? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So you are called to that ministry, and that ministry is reconciliation. And he's given these gifts, these people gifts. Now, I wanted you to understand um, the second thing is, okay, the first one is gift. The second one is what Jeff already spoke about, grace. All right. How is it they got to this place? How is it that we are here? And some of you are there that you are that particular gift of being an apostolic leader, a prophet, uh, a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher. How is it that that happens? It happens according to divine election and choice. And then in Romans 12, the word of God says in verse 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren and sisters, by the mercies of God. And we're doing that today, commending Pastor Jody, to this very grace, I beseech you that you present yourself and your bodies as what? A living sacrifice. Why? For this is your reasonable and acceptable servants. And then it says service. And it says, and don't be conformed to this world. We're living in this world right now. That's crazy. <laughs> but the kingdom of God yeah. is what we belong to. Thank you, we're citizens of heaven. I know we're Americans, and we need to hold our country in great honor and pray for her and repent for her. But we're, when it's ultimately said and done, we're, kingdom, we're, we're servants of heaven and of the kingdom of God. So the gift, God has given these gifts. Then the second thing is the grace. And, present, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The new covenant that he said he made, he didn't just write on tablets of stone in the old one. The new one he said he's going to write it on the tablets of our heart, but also of our mind up here where the battle is, in our mind to be transformed. So first one, gift, Ephesians 4, second one, grace. And I'm pointing this out because, you know, a calling is not a career. I want to choose this career. I want to choose that career. That is commendable, and it should be honored, right? If you choose you want a career to be a doctor, personally, I think that's a ministry. If you want to be a nurse, that's a ministry. If you want a dentist, in a way, it's a ministry because you're caring for people and, and, and truly. But when it comes to the calling of God, he's the one who chooses. He's the one who elects. And it says here, I want it to, to you understand that the word of God says, so about this gift, having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is in them and given to us, let us use them. So it's the gift of ministry and the call of ministry as to why Pastor Jody is here. And it says, the gift of ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches and teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. So the gift of leadership comes by the grace of God. It's not, as we've said, you know, we're all peoples, red and yellow, black and white. Somos todos, todo el pueblo de Dios. We're all people of God. We all, you know, we might be white folks here, but our heart's all people. And we ain't really white because we don't really know where we are and where we came from. Our roots go all over the earth, right? But we're all people. And so God brings this gift, the call to ministry, through his divine election, God gave some to be, and then the second thing, by his grace. It's by his grace. All right? Then the third thing is the Holy Spirit. And we find that in the book of Corinthians, where he speaks about, it's the same thing where he speaks about the gifts that he gives. The gifts that he gives in, verse, in chapter 12, the same thing. And I just want to bring it down to verse 11 where it says this. But by one and the same Spirit, capital S, 
Holy Spirit, God, third person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He says, but one and the same Spirit, capital S, working all things, distributing. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. These are gifts right here. And they have spiritual gifts inside of them. But it's not that they just decided that this is what, it's that God called them and ordained them. So it's by God's divine gifting, Jesus gave gifts to men. It's by God's divine grace, that by his grace you were called. And it's, it's by his Holy Spirit that they function and operate. But one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing to each one of individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body. For by one Spirit, we were all baptized. So I wanted to share to you today as we recognize Pastor Jody and we um, affirm her as an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's something for all of us to be reminded of that God calls us. From our mother's womb sometimes he calls us. And he ordains us by his divine election. And he's the one, Jesus, who gave gifts to men. Some to be pastors. Some to be teachers. Apostles, prophets, evangelists. And it's by his Holy Spirit that they're able to function. Not because of what my husband, Pastor Jeff, said, zeal or passion and compassion. Those are all good. Those are all good from the Holy Spirit. But it's the Holy Spirit that supernaturally empowers them and has empowered them all these years to function as pastors. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. So on that note, Pastor Jody, I'm going to ask you some you questions. Stand over here in front. I was going to leave them there so they could see the expressions on their face. But. All right. So just wanted to say real quick, too, that because what Nancy reminded me of a passage I left out, but she and I share a, an enjoyment of Acts 10:38, uh -huh. which says simply that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth uh -huh. with the Holy Spirit and power. And you know what he did with that? He went about first and foremost doing good. How many of you would agree with me that this couple does good? Uh -huh. Amen? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen? And it's exactly what Nancy just shared. It's because of the grace, the gift, and the anointing yeah. of the Holy Spirit that they have received, the love of God that they have received, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what about doing good and healing? I love this. All those who are oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Healing. This is a house of healing. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Father. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because God was with them. Because God was with them. So, Pastor Jody, do you believe in your heart that you are truly called by God and his church to be a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ? I do. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures and in seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ. Amen. If you didn't hear it, she said absolutely. <laughs> Will you minister the word of God and proclaim the gospel of Christ, seeking to lead the people into his presence, power, and grace of God? Will you seek in all ways to bring them to a more perfect knowledge of Christ? Will you undertake to be a faithful minister to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the body of Christ? Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family in accordance with the teachings of Jesus, 
so that you may be a wholesome example to the people. And will you persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace, both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the meditation of Jesus Christ, mediation rather, forgive me, and in the sanctification of the Holy Spirit? Do you accept the faith and order of mutual faith ministries and network and promise to be loyal to this fellowship that it may more and more be a faithful and fruitful branch of the church universal and while cherishing brotherly love toward all followers of Christ everywhere do you engage to seek the purity peace and growth of this network and fellowship and finally may the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. Would you stand as a congregation, please? I'm going to read a scripture, and then after the scripture, I'm going to ask a question. And if you do, will you respond in the affirmative by saying, we will? All right. First of all, too, I would like the children of this couple to come up here if they're here that's important it's important I'm going to ask them a private question first and then address the congregation Jeff and I will you three do you affirm and release your mother to be a servant and pastor of God seeing that God has called her beyond just being your mom, but being a mother in Israel to the house of God. Yes? yes? Good. All right. All right, congregation. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things, us. He chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Question, will you acknowledge, honor, and support the call of God to the ministry of Pastor Jody Lynn Vernal? 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Will you to commit to pray and be thankful for Pastor Lynn jo Ver Jody Lynn Vernal and her family as she fulfills her call to the ministry. Yes. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. So Christ himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some pastors, and some to be teachers, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of God. Will you honor and submit to Pastor Jody Vernal as she equips the church for works of service? Yes. Hebrews 13, 7. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Will you follow Pastor Jody Vernal as she follows Christ Jesus our Lord and imitate her faith, not just by being a hearer, but a doer of the word of God? Well. John 10, 12 through 13, the hired hand is not the, shepherd, is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Will you esteem and value the sacrifice of Pastor Jody Vernal as a true under-shepherd who lays down her life for the sheep as Christ laid his life down for us all? Romans 3, 23 through 24, for all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. As recipients of the immeasurable grace of God, will you also extend to Pastor Jody Vernal and Pastor Frank as well, the same grace that you and I have received, the room as it were, to be unintentionally fallible and human, not maligning her, and by so doing, judge yourself as an unmerciful servant of God. Last, 1 Corinthians 9, 9 through 10, for it is written in the law of Moses, do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it about oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this has been written for us because whoever plows and threshes should be able to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. Final question, will you financially support the ministry and call of Pastor Jody Vernal by being faithful in giving your tithes and your offerings as unto the Lord? Amen. May the Lord bless you for affirming this. Well, thank you, Father. Now we're going to lay hands on these guys, so I'm going to move this out. Five of you just gather right here looking that way. Amen. You, you guys stand behind mom and dad because we'll probably end up praying for you guys too. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, deacons and trustees, if you would join us also. Deacons and trustees. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Now, at times like these, it's not a time to hold back, okay? We're going to begin with just an opening prayer, but should the Lord give you something, you go ahead and obey the Lord. But Nancy and I are going to be sharing some things with them that uh, the Lord will be saying to us, has said already. And I'm just going to open with an opening prayer as we commission Pastor Jody, you know, to the ministry of a pastor. Uh, to recognize the ministry gift that is upon her. And then as the Lord, should the Lord give you something, you know, you'd be free to share it. All right? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. Yes, O Lord. And we acknowledge without your comfort, guidance, mm. and empowerment, Lord, Lord we are nothing. Amen absolutely nothing we acknowledge that you have been the one who has come to assist us and guide us and to anoint us and to lead us into all truth and today we thank you for our sister and our brother we thank you for pastor jody we affirm pastor frank as well but lord as we lay hands upon pastor jody we acknowledge and recognize the ministry gift that she's received from you that she is not receiving a title, she's not receiving an office, but she has been given a gift mm -hmm. and been made a gift. Mm -hmm. She is a gift. She's not just opening a package today, but she's yielding and giving back Hallelujah. that which you Hallelujah. have made her to be. So Father, we together join her on this altar. We join her on this altar. Lord, as you, even when the prophets of, Eli, the prophets of Baal uh, sought to sought to humiliate the the prophet Elijah. Elijah said, "You do your thing, and wait till you see me do mine." Mm. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, today the altar has been rebuilt, mm. the trenches have been dug, yes. and the water has been poured. Yes. Amen. And you say, "Add I more water, because I I'm about to show you what I will do from heaven." And so, Lord, we call upon you. Let fire. Lord, fall even in this house today. Let the anointing come upon not only pastors Frank and Jody, but upon the, the people that are here. Lord, you've placed them in a dark place. You've placed them and given them light and life and love. Hallelujah. You have, you have commissioned them even as we're doing today. Lord, commissioning this your servant. Hallelujah. Lord, to begin here in Jerusalem 
and take it unto the ends of the earth. So we thank you for your faithfulness to date, but we look forward, Lord, to what you will do in the days to come. Hallelujah. We will follow you with all of our hearts. And Pastor Jody says today, Lord, I am yours. Take me as I am, Lord. I surrender fully to you. We acknowledge it. We affirm it as the congregation. We accept her, Lord. We thank you for her, Lord. Lord, we also take the model, Lord, that she is, even as you have replicated yourself in this couple and in this family. So replicate yourself in us, Lord. Hallelujah, this very day. Let, Lord, the fire fall upon us as well, Lord. Let the anointing fall not only upon our sister, but come in power and authority, Lord, upon her, upon this family, Lord, and upon this church. Hallelujah. Multiply its seed, Lord. Multiply its seed, not only here in Kingston, not only here in the Hudson Valley, Lord, but unto the ends of the earth. Multiply its seed. Raise up laborers, Lord. Raise up workers, Father. Hallelujah. For even as you declared, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. This altar this morning, Lord, this is an altar of harvesters, of laborers. Hallelujah. Of workers. Hallelujah. And we give them to you, Lord, in this moment. Open your heart and your mind, Lord. Speak what is upon your heart, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak and declare and guide. Hallelujah. Fortify and infuse, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord would say that even from your mother's womb, I separated you as a minister unto me. For I would say to this day and remind you, as you say in your heart, and how shall things change now with this thing that I am being recognized to be? The Lord would say, remember to keep your first ministry, the ministry to me. For as you minister unto me in my heart, as you've done all these years, it will be well as you've ministered unto other. Hasn't it been so? Hasn't it been true as you've ministered to me that I have equipped you and I've given you the word in season? I've given you truth and discernment. But know this day as I affirm and confirm you. Remember the simplicity of this reality. Continue ever your ministry to me, both of you. For I, the Lord, would say as you minister unto me and you remember my ways and my law and my commands and the love relationship that we do have in me by the Father's dispensation and the Holy Spirit's operation, you will begin to fulfill even a greater measure, says the Lord. For I am anointing you this day, confirming you this day, setting you apart publicly and officially this day as one who has ministered unto me. And because you've ministered unto me, you are qualified to to minister to others, says the Lord. So remember that first calling as you go and know that I'm doing something very creative this day in you. I am opening up your ears and I'm putting fire in your mouth for where you have been hesitant even to say, is what I'm hearing really you, Lord? Uh, And you've been hesitant to even speak at times. You're going to know that the river of my Holy Spirit is going to begin to flow into your ear. You will have the word of knowledge. You will have the word of faith. You will have the discernment of spirits and you will have the supernatural power of God operating in a greater measure. It has been operating all these years of your faithfulness. But I am entrusting you with more, says the Lord. And I'm going to cause you to be fluid in speech as never before. And you will be succinct like a teacher, says God. For that gift is also who you are. And I am releasing you with a greater measure to raise up those who would minister in this hour and at this time. And know, says the Lord, my son, that these days, because of your faithfulness, I am releasing not to 
to just you, but to your heirs, to your sons and your daughters in the faith, a greater anointing to do the work of the ministry in their homes, in their families, in their communities, in their neighborhoods. This day, the anointing that flows from me and comes down upon your head, even that blessed anointing, as it were, will flow down your robes this day. Though they are not visible to others here, they are visible to me. The robes of righteousness that I've clothed you in, that same anointing will fall down on others that are here today, and they will know a quickening in their spirit of a supernatural anointing coming to them. For as you've been entrusted with a greater anointing, so will they also, says the Lord, and signs and wonders shall follow them, and they shall follow you, says the Lord. So I set you apart, and I mark you, I fill you, I anoint you, I release you, I command you. But first and foremost, I delight in your ministry to me, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for surely I have drawn you up out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and know this, that I am the rock underneath your feet on which I have set you. And I have put a new song in your mouth, yea, even a song that is spread through your family's lives, a song which is sung together as a family. Many will see it and have seen it and fear and trust in me, says the Lord. But I am doing a new thing in this day, says the Lord, for I am broadening, broadening the yes, path that yes, you are on, yes, yes. broadening and extending through those mm. that you have poured Hallelujah. that which you have received from me into. Do not worry about it. Do not fret. Do not seek to try to administrate it, says the Lord, for I am the administrator. I am the spirit that is within you. I am the spirit that is being multiplied, yea, even in your family, in your marriage, in your house, and in this house of mine, says the Lord. For I will broaden the path. I will broaden the influence. I will broaden the effect of this ministry, says the Lord. For lives that have been changed and fully fully restored have power, says the Lord. Where the anointing exists, I break the yoke. Hallelujah. So keep yourself clean, says the Lord. Keep yourself pure, says the Lord. Walk, walk with me in the light, says the Lord, upon a narrow path as I broaden your path. You and I will walk the narrow road, says the Lord. You will have disciplines that you will not even suggest to others. They're disciplines between you and me. They're times of joy. They're times of intimacy that you and I will know. But because of this, I will make your path great, says the Lord. And the influence of those you have affected in, in influence shall be great as well, says the Lord. Many shall be liberated. Many shall be free. Many captives, hallelujah, shall escape the dungeons of hell, hallelujah, and be brought out and set upon the rock of whom I am, says the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord, the Lord spoke to my heart these two words during worship, broaden the base, mm. and that's what mm. came through this word. Mm. Mm -hmm. Powerful word. Mm -hmm. Powerful word. Broaden mm. the base. Thank and you, you need to write freedom's mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to write mm -hmm. freedom's yeah. path. Yeah. The path of deliverance, you need to put it together in yeah. a booklet. Yeah. You need to have it. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to share it the entrustments of deliverance and freedom's road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to write it yeah. out and make yeah. it plain so that those who read it can run mm -hmm. with freedom's right. path right. and know. And the Lord told That's me right. that last night at the table mm -hmm. that you were to write that you, and, and to, and you, to take it and give it away Amen. so that others can find freedom's road. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Church, you're the stories. Hallelujah. Yeah, you are. You're the, you're the changed lives, hallelujah. How many here, your life has been changed by being a part of this family? Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. amen. Amen, tell your story. Everyone has a story, amen. Everybody's got a story, hallelujah. The last, last men's retreat, we sang that song. We'll sing it again the next time we get together, brothers, amen. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a song. Everyone's a little different, but we all went wrong. 
Amen. But the Savior came. Amen. He took the blame. He changed everything. Thank you, Lord. And what I hear the Lord saying is he wants those stories to be told. Amen. He wants your story to be told. Hallelujah. And if you need help with that, you get the help. Maybe the Lord's going to send you somebody to be a ghostwriter, so to speak. Amen. And put this story together. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a shout and a hand. Uh, Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Answer that question. Don't answer that question. Thank you, Father. Is that Jody's? No, it's Brother Frank's. All right, we are simply affirming this brother's ordination and presenting him with a certificate of ordination. It certifies that Francis. What's that middle name, brother? I should know. Michael. I thought it was Michael. That's right. That's such a fancy M there. Francis Michael Vernal has been set apart and called to the ministry of the gospel with all the official rights and privileges of service recognized on November 15th, his very birthday. Hallelujah. 2020. I don't know, not everything's been bad in 2020, amen? Hallelujah. This is a bright light in 2020. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Sign both Jeff and Nancy. And uh, you can hang this wherever you care to. Amen. And there's a card for Francis Michael Vernal. Thank you. And Jody, let me just present, both Nancy and I present this to you. Certificate of ordination certifies that Jody, is it Lynn? It's Lynn, right? Lynn. Lynn, that's right. (laughs) Vernal, come on. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Has been set apart and called to the ministry of the gospel with all official rights and privileges of service with her precious husband. Yes. Amen. Ordained on his birthday. <laughs> we should pencil that in there. November 15, 2020, and signed by Jeff and Nancy, Jody L. Vernal. God bless you. You. Thank you. Hey, can we? Uh, one more time for Jeff and Nancy Clark. So blessed to have them. Let me just pray. Can you pray with me? Father, I just thank you, Lord, for for the gift of Jody. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, for the words that you spoke over her today, Lord. May her, may she know unequivocally how important she is to the body of Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, that, uh, that not only can we recognize her, but that you, first and foremost, have recognized her. And you set her here. And so we're just so grateful, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this church. Thank you, Lord, that 21 years ago you brought us here. Uh, (laughs) What a ride it's been. Uh, Lord, but it's an honor and it's a privilege to stand here today uh, formally, I guess, as a co-pastor with my wife for Crossroads Christian Fellowship. Lord, it's an honor. Help us, Lord, to do you proud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Lord, thank you, Father, for what you're doing, and thank you, Lord, for what you'll do. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, the words spoken over this church today, I thank you, Lord, that they're in advance, that they will come to fruition, that there's many, many people here, Lord, that 
have incredible stories of what the goodness of God is capable of doing. And Lord, I thank you that that word's going to spread. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And now may the Lord bless you. Do you want to say something? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, lift up his countenance to you, and give you guys peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.